All right, this is the last video in the series about React Query. And I'm gonna talk a little about using React Query with TypeScript in this one. So what I've done here is I created a new installation of a Create React app where I also added TypeScript. And then I have the files here from the video where I showed you how to use the query client. So that's the code that I have here that I'm gonna transform into TypeScript. So you can see that these ones are .js files now, the index.js, we need to rename this one to index.tsx, like this. So this is the only thing we have to do with this file, and then move back to the app.js file, rename it to app.tsx. Uh, and you can see now that it starts complaining here about stuff that we need to type. First, we're gonna type the data that we get back from the API. So I'm probably gonna start up my environment, npm start. Yeah, fail to compile, it doesn't matter because now TypeScript complains that this user implicitly has an any type. But we can see the data here that we get back. We have to type this data because we're in TypeScript now, so we should type it. That's actually the most important thing here. We want to have types on the data that we get back so it will be very easy to work with and that we also know beforehand how our data structure will look like. So we have this data page per page, support, total, total pages. Support is an object with two strings text and URL, and the data is going to be an array. And here we have the structure of each element in the array. So go back to the code editor. And up here, first we're going to create a type for the data, type data equal. And if we look at the data here, we have the avatar, email, first name, ID, and last name. So avatar, that one is going to be a string. The email is going to be a string. The first underscore name is going to be a string. And the ID is going to be a number. The last underscore name is going to be a string. Something like this. Probably we could move this one up. So we have the ID first. All right, so that's the data. And if we look at this one here, then we have the support. So we can type that one. We create another type, support equal. We have the text. It's going to be a string. And we have the URL. It's going to be a string. Then we have the complete data object that we get back. If we look here, we can close this ones down. So we have data page per page support total and total pages. So that's the actual data that we get back. And we can call this type users. So we have the data. That one is going to be an array of the data type that we created up here. We have the page. That one is going to be a number. We have the per page. It's going to be a number. And we have the support. It's going to be of the type support that we created. And we have the total. It's going to be a number. And we have the total underscore pages. That is going to be a number also. So that's our types for the data that we get back. So if we look at our fetch users function now, we can see that we, we don't specify type here. But we want to specify the return type. And this is a promise. So we have a colon, a promise. Promise is a generic, so we can send in our users like this. So this will specify this if we hover over it, that it's a promise of users. So that's great. And we can also type our add user data here. So async, we have the user. This one is actually our own type with just the first name and the last name. So we can specify it like an object with first name string and last underscore name string. Yeah, do a little inline <laughs> typing here. Then we have a colon and the return type on this one is gonna be a promise also. It's a generic and we give it the users like this. So this is the types for the add user and the fetch users. All right, so we have the types on our functions. And if we look here, we're sending in the fetch users React Query will interpret this one as users, so we don't actually have to specify it to a specific type. So that's great. If we, for example, type in users dot 
you can see that we get all this nice auto completion here and that's super sweet that's uh, one of the great great benefits with using typescript because the code knows the structure of the data and that's why we can get the auto completion here with all the properties so we don't actually have to type anything but let's say for example that you want to type the error the error is of type unknown and if we look here this error actually has a type of error constructor so if we want to have that typed use query is a generic the first one is going to be the users and then the second one is the actual error and it's going to be of the type error constructor so now if we hover over the error you can see that we have that type so everything is typed is loading is typed by default it's a boolean and then we have the users so this can also be very useful if you, for example, create a custom hook, then you need to specify the types and you want to specify the types because you want to have the type of the data that you return. For example, when I use uh, GraphQL with React Query, I create a custom hook for that. And then I can send in the types to that hook and I type use query so I know the types of the data that I will return from the API. So that's super, super sweet. And now if we go down here, for example, uh, to this one, you can see that it complains. It doesn't know spread types may only be created from object types. And that's because it doesn't know the type of the old data. And I've seen this is done in different ways if you Google around on the internet a little bit. But the way I sold it is that this set query data is also generic. So you can specify the data and the data is going to be users. But then it will complain because the users can also be undefined. So we have to specify this as a union type with undefined also, like this, undefined. And that means that it will complain now because now this can be undefined and that's no good. So I will change this one from an implicit return to an explicit return. I return an object here. And then I'm going to check if old data, then I'm going to return that object. Yeah, I know it complains and yeah, I know why I specified the wrong type up here. This one isn't correct on the add user. It's actually not returning the users. It's returning something else and that's... So I'm just going to comment this one out for now and I'm going to have a look at this one new user yeah uh, 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 object is possible on the fine okay so if so I add this one if no user users then I return null and then it will work I add a user and then we can see new user it's going to be created at first name id and last name so we have to type this one also so I'm going to copy this one and up here I can create a type returned user I'm just going to have this one to look at now created at and that's probably what it doesn't like because we don't have that one on the users you can see here the data id avatar email first name last name uh, so we don't have that created at so instead of creating this one we can actually do it like this um, i go back down here i uncomment this one and instead of returning the whole new user here i'm going to return an object with first name is going to be the new user dot first name and the last name is going to be the new user dot last underscore name first name does not exist on type users yeah of course we have to change this one also it should be the data that we get back not users so add user i change the data and this will still complain and that's because probably 
we have to cast this as data like that. And we don't even need that if statement because now we're saying that it can only be users and not undefined. So this is how you type it. You see, TypeScript can be a little bit cumbersome, but it's great because it will show you what you're doing wrong and you can correct it this way. Yeah, so here I was actually returning the wrong type of data for this array. So that's no good. So now I return the first name and last name, and then I specify it as the data type. So it will have the other properties also, but we won't have any information in it now, but it will interpret it as the data object. So this will hopefully work now. No. Why is it so? It isn't complaining. Uh, I'm going to specify this as undefined also to see what happens. And then it works. So don't know why it didn't complain here, but this data can also be undefined. So specify it as undefined and you can check for the old data here. I guess if I remove this one now, it will complain. No, but it doesn't work because it can be undefined. So it must be something with my editor right now as it won't highlight it here. But this one can be uses or undefined and you can check if that old data exists. Then you can return something and modify the cache. So a little bit tricky here, but it seems to be working. And the most important thing with this video, I think it is that you actually want your data that you get back from the use query hook. You want that one type so that you can use those nice autocomplete on the users. You have every property here that you can find on the users. So that's super neat. It has TypeScript support built in, so we don't have to create our own types for use query or use mutation or anything like that. It's built in. And this concludes this week's videos on React Query. I hope you enjoy them. And please subscribe to my channel. I want this channel to grow and support me and turn that notifications on. And see you in another one.